Hey, it's Brock here with Rock Hill Farms, and today I'm in kind of a bad mood because I need to buy tires. Yeah, he's been talking about it. Nobody likes to buy tires. And I went to the dealership, and I, I was waiting on another repair to be done, and they gave me a quote that was like $450 a tire. And I said, where have we come in the last 10 years? It doesn't seem like that long ago when tires were $60 to $100. Yeah. And maybe more, because I have a big truck. Yeah, I might 20, pay more. Yeah, 20-inch tires, you're going to pay up a little more, yep. But $450. Woo. So what I've done now is searched out someone locally who I felt like could give me a better price, but also who would step in front of a camera and explain to me everything I might need to know about tires, like how to choose the right tire and how to know when those tires are due to be replaced and just educate me as a buyer so I'm not wasting a lot of money buying tires that expensive. So uh, would you say you are that tire expert who can answer those questions? I'll today? be happy to do my very best, Brock. I'm Mike with Hammer Trucks and Equipment. We're uh, based out of Columbus, Kansas. Uh, we do a, we're a small town tire shop. And beyond that, he does equipment auctions at hammerhigh.com. Hammerhigh.com. So if you're looking for an old tractor or a bulldozer or something, check out that. All right, so I think what we want to do now is take a look at my tires. Um, they're worn pretty low. I have a tendency to say I've paid for this rubber that's on this wheel, and I want to get all the life out of that. But there comes a point when I'm trying to use up the, that last little bit of tread, but I'm pulling a load behind me, that it's, it's not safe to do that. So that's the first thing I want to look at is the condition of my tires. Are these past the point they should have been replaced or technically not quite there yet? We'll take a look at it. I Google to research this and I say, how much tread should you have on your tires? When are they bad? And the answer that comes up is 230 seconds. Not much. So if you actually check this with the, where it's sitting right now, you're going to get a lot more than that, as if these tires are still good. But they've got chunking right here. They've got chunking here. These are the front tires. And what's really concerning is that we have uneven wear where you've got, this is a low spot, it might be hard to see on camera, and then right next to it is a high spot. So that means some kind of maintenance needs to be done on my truck already. Lack of rotation could sometimes cause that. Uh, most times an alignment will help and I always recommend when you get a new set of tires to get an alignment if you start irregular wear on your tires it's very difficult to stop mm -hmm. so if you get an alignment get a new set of tires you have the best opportunity for that tire to get to your um, recommended service life which um, you know 50 60 thousand miles or whatever your tires are that you're putting on but what does it say on your tread depth gauge for these right here. Well, it sort of depends on where you measure. We'll try and pick a low point here. Yeah, let's it's, check the low, the high. If I go right here, that's gonna come back at, that'll be a, I got uh, probably a four, four there. And on the other side of the tire where you have the most. In 30 seconds? Yeah, 430 seconds, that's correct. I, we have a 930 seconds here. So we, we're four here and nine here, 30 seconds. This tire, with with the application and your towing, you need tires. Pretty yeah. clear. This is you're you're due. Oh yeah. So I would never continue to use these, but I find it interesting that according to that depth gauge, these aren't even due for replacement. And if I came in here today for a mileage warranty, so we'd have a problem with these tires. So I want to go ahead now. Now that we've looked at my tires and where they're at, I want to talk about. What happens with your mileage warranty? Because I think most people probably just don't try to get their money out of a mileage warranty. But it's actually difficult. I worked at a tire shop probably 10 years ago, and I was at the front desk. And when someone came in, they said, I've got a warranty issue on my tires. I want to get them replaced. I only got half the mileage. Usually, it was one out of 20 people got their money. Mm -hmm. or got their discount on their next tires. And the reason for that is what he's talking about with tire rotation, that to warranty a tire, it has to get down to 230 seconds all the way across. Even where, that's, that's very important. Because here, I've got almost zero in the middle. If this goes bald in the middle and this has four, six, or 630 seconds, then the implication is that I did something wrong. 
Either I overinflated my tires and made them wear in the middle, or there's a problem with the vehicle. If they wear on the outsides more than the insides, then you've probably underinflated. I think the uh, tire people call it a mechanical problem. It's, it's your truck's problem, not the tire's fault. And then if you come in to the tire shop and you say, um, I need a tire warranty, and they look at it and they say, yeah, that's, e that's even wear all the way across and your tires are low, we're going to give you that warranty claim. If you have 50,000 miles on them, then you've used 80% of what you were supposed to get. And that means your warranty is going to be low. You're going to get 20, 20, 10 bucks tire. It's hardly worth your time. Yeah. So it's just something to keep in mind that it's, it's harder than you might think to get a claim on a tire. It, warranty. it really is. The uh, tire manufacturers intentionally make it difficult in my opinion. Yeah. And, uh, it doesn't matter what brand that's just across the board. And then I can understand from their perspective too, that if you put it on a car that's all jacked up and it eats the side off, that's not their fault. Not the, not the tire's fault. Yeah. All right, so these are the tires that I'm here to buy. And most of the time, I don't break down the brands and try to figure it out myself. I call a guy who knows tires and I say, you know, this is what my truck is. This is what I haul. This is the amount of weight I pull. What, what do you recommend? I'm, I'm looking not for the bottom of the cheapest tire I can get. I want something that's going to last and handle that weight. And this is the tire the last guy recommended. And I didn't get the life I wanted out of them. I got about 25,000 miles. And most of these tires have a 50 or 60,000 mile warranty. Mm -hmm. but we already talked about they're not going to replace those. Nope. So I called a different tire guy. And I said, what would you recommend? And you are a dealer for... Hercules. Hercules tires. Correct. You think they're competitive in the market? I know they're competitive in the market. I have sold enough of them for a long enough period of time that they they run with a tier one tire at a tier three price. Okay, so I sometimes pull a dump trailer, a skid steer, tractor, up to 15,000 pound load behind my truck. But mostly, I sometimes I'm driving through my fields. It could be muddy out there. I don't want to get stuck. But mostly, I'm on the highway, so I don't want like a big mud tire. Mm -hmm. So um, this is the tire you picked. It's yeah. a Hercules TerraTrack AT. ATX Venture. So these aren't super aggressive. They've got a little bit of that tread coming down. I'll let you tell them a little bit about this. Well, I interviewed you on the phone, and I just everything you told me, and then I I made the uh, assumption that a all-terrain tire is going to be the best application for you because. Ultimately, you're mostly pavement, but you do haul your trailers and you do go out and pasture and you, you haul your log splitters around and, and especially hauling weight with your skid steers and, and a, you need a heavy 10 ply tire that's going to be quiet going down the road. You, you don't want the rum, 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 rum. That's going to drive you out of the cab and you're going to call me back and you're going to be very disappointed. <laughs> Which, by the way, these do come with a 45 day. We're guaranteed you're going to be happy warranty. So there's that. So if you aren't happy, We'll take care of you for the first 45 days as far as the noise or something like that concerned. So these are, are going to be load rangey or 10 ply, are going to be three peak winter rated, which means that they have met the government standards for stopping, starting and turning in ice and snow conditions. And if it has that, there's a little mountain a little emblem on them. Right there. So I'll tell you what I know about tire sizes. 285 is the first number. LT means light truck. 285 is the width of the tire in millimeters. The second number is a ratio between the height and the width. So if your 285 stays the same, but this goes from 60 to 65, it's taller. And then the 20 is the rim size. Any numbers on here beyond that, I don't understand except, well, you just told us the load range E means it's a 10 ply tire. Now this is something that's really confused me is how ply ratings work. Because I would go in and say, I've been told I want a 14 ply trailer tire or I want a minimum 10 ply truck tire. But whenever I look on the side of the tire, it doesn't list 10 plies off. Uh, one ply nylon, two ply steel plus two ply polyester and the side walls are two ply. So that adds up to seven. And I'm thinking, why aren't they all steel? But turns out it's very rare to have an all steel. You can get all steel on a trailer tire, but I don't know if it's a difference with the ride, but so I Googled that. Why is a 10 ply tire not list 10 plies? And they said that tire construction used to be very basic 
and that there, you would count the number of plies. Now there's other construction techniques on it, and what really matters is how much weight have they been proven that they can hold. That's correct. And this is load range E. That's going to tell you the ply rating, and it's going to tell you how many pounds of weight this can mm -hmm. hold. So they, another thing that you can talk about here is 125, 122S. 125 is a, a universal standard of measurement for tires. So uh, 125, in this case, I have a cheat sheet. It's 3,540 pounds that this tire can haul safely at full rated uh, PSI. So whenever you look at that number, I think, well, is that enough? I haul that skid steer, it's 10,000 pounds plus a trailer. I can, its tow rating is 19,000. Is that enough for me? Well, the axle rating on the back of the truck is 6,050 pounds. So that means the amount of weight carried by the weight of the truck plus the payload can't exceed 6,000 pounds. So the two tires that are going on the back are excess. rated for 7,000. So if my tires are rated for more than my axle, I'd say that's a sufficient it's, tire. It's a good start. The other number, it's a little bit smaller. That's going to be for your dual tire configuration. I don't understand exactly why, but on duals, you don't get as much pounds per tire. And all of these, you can find these numbers in a chart online, which yep. is what you're referencing yeah, here. Yeah, I've, I've got a cheat sheet here. But it's easily available. Google's your friend. There's another factor. We've talked about things that cause your tire to wear out early, and those include, you know, a mechanical problem with your vehicle and not rotating, or it's just a low quality tire. But another factor is the age of the tire. We've all seen a tire that is dry rotted. And you said that if someone comes in with a tire that is more than five years old, you won't fix that tire. That's correct. Because essentially the rubber has degraded over that period of time. That is correct. So there's numbers on this that tell you when your tire was made. Because hypothetically, if I run a tire shop, I can order in a truckload of tires and these, this one here wasn't as popular as I thought it would be. And when I got it, it was nine months old and it was in my warehouse for another year. You could be buying a tire that is two years old or more when really the serviceable life of the rubber should only be about five years. So it matters how old your tires are. This tire was made in the third week of 2024. So this in my mind is fresh inventory because it was January of 2024 and we're in March. This tire says 0324 at the end of the DOT number means it was made the third week of January of 2024. Yeah. So it, your advice would be buy the newest tire that you can if possible. Absolutely, if you can. You don't always get the option. Uh, we still get tires in from 2023. They haven't used through all the inventory sitting in the warehouse just like you talked about. It would be rare to have anything in a 2022 come through my door. Most, uh, like the second half of 2023 and newer is what I see come through. And is there any other information on this tire that we, I, that we need to cover? Would, let's talk about this here. So we've covered this here. Three Peak Winter Mountain Rated. That's, uh, I think, is an important designation. It, it, it's an indicator of a premium tire. And then we've got M and S on here. So that's going to be mud and snow. So would the average car tire say that? Not all of them. It 50, just uh, I, I'd say 70% will, but not all. And then we got LT, light truck. Uh, car tires will be P series. You'll find that on there. And I always see that and I think, well, this isn't a light truck. This is an HD truck, but that means it's not a semi, right? That, sure. That's just the designation. That's yep. LT is light truck. And then you said the tire sizes is the 285-60R. The radial mm -hmm. and 20. 20 is your, your rim. Something else I want to talk about while we're talking about this is I could have a temptation to say, well, I'm just going to get a bigger tire and a bigger, you know, wider, taller, just a little bit bigger tire. I like the way it looks. I like maybe it, I think it'll give me a better performance. Something I found out the hard way is you need to be really careful if your vehicle is new and under warranty. If you upgrade your tire size on a truck, it will void 
your transmission warranty, and a lot of your warranty. Yeah. So something that I didn't know and a lot of people didn't know is be careful about changing tires to a bigger size while you're under warranty. And if, so there's two possibilities. Either the warranty companies are, are stupid and they just think that that can affect your transmission or you're actually potentially damaging your vehicle by going to a bigger tire. This, we've covered the load ratings and the weight rating. This particular tire has a S on here. S is a speed designation. 112 mile an hour tire. You can see, like I got a tire there, it's an H, it's 130. I got an M, it's an 81 miles an hour. Then you can have like a 76 if it's an N. There's, uh, it's all easily resourceable on the internet. Just Google what does a, the tire ratings mean. So this tire is good to 112 miles an hour at full rated capacity. So you could be 3,540 pounds at 80 PSI going down the road and you should be safe. That is how the tire is rated. Something else he told me that I found really interesting is when I worked at the, the tire center, we were supposed to try to upsell every customer with a premium package where like an extra $10 per tire, they got road hazard warranty. That's correct. Now you were telling me that if I buy these tires from you, I don't have to pay for that, it's included? It's included in the price of the tire. And I don't jack up extra. Hercules is the only tire manufacturer that I'm aware of that has a factory warranty. That isn't a aftermarket warranty that's sold by a big box store or, or something like that. Hercules warranties these tires for the first 50% um, of the tread or the first two years for a non-serviceable injury, such as a, uh, a nail spike here in your sidewall. And you kind of called that a warranty just now, but really it's like a road, road hazard. hazard insurance. Road hazard, that's because right. It's, it's not saying it was the fault of the tire. It was right. your... You, you, ran, you, over you ran over a, um, a giant gutter spike, or I got one right over here. I don't don't know what he hit, but it I couldn't fix the tire. I just ordered a new tire and I put it on. I said, thank you, Mr. Customer, for coming back to see me. If I sell you a Cooper, or I sell you a, a, a Falcon, or any other brands, and I'm, there's a really good brands out there. I'm not picking on them, but I, as a small town independent shop, cannot offer you a road hazard. I want to take care of my customers, and that is something that I can do that other tire shops can't do because I'm a Hercules dealer. And so I'm saving $135 a tire by shopping around, and then I'm getting a road hazard coverage and uh yeah. then it's just a matter of trusting that hercules is a good tire so i just got to take your word for well it. there's going to be a, a million views on this yeah so there'll be a million people out there that will judge when you make a follow-up video saying i hate hercules tires so we hope that don't happen we hope you love them they like i said they do come with a 45 day we want you to be happy warranty that also comes from hercules we, if you don't like it, we'll put you in another Hercules and we'll try and make you as happy as we can. All right, so I got my tires on. I'm watching these guys work. There are a few tricks of the trade and interesting tools I want to show you. First is this product right here. You want to tell us what it is and what it replaces and why you use it? So these are commercial balancing beads. We use these in place of lead wheel weights, whether it's on hammer them on the outside or the sticky ones on the inside. In my opinion, these do a better job of balancing the tire throughout the life of the tire. Especially for like our ag guys, as soon as they hit through that mud puddle, they got mud inside their, their rim. There is no way a static balance or a lead balance is going to maintain a balance through the life of that tire because it's always changing. These will compensate and always balance every time you stop and start. And the other thing it does is through irregular wear, like you had choppy wear on your tires, the, that will cause uh, vibration just because of, I mean, it's, it's going like that down the road. This will help compensate for the irregular wear through the life of the tire. They're just little tiny uh, ceramic beads and we just scoop in what we need. It has a nice little chart here. We look up pretty much every time. Uh, three, four, five, and six is pretty common. Uh, if you get into your commercial truck tires, you know, 10 and 12 ounces there is pretty common. We like them. We have a lot of them out, and uh, they seem to work real good for us. Then the next thing, and this, uh, I've seen this a couple times now, and I can't understand it. 
I've tried with every bit of my intelligence to wrap my head around it, but somehow using this extension on an impact limits the amount of torque it puts out. This one is 140 foot pounds. So in my mind, the way it works is if this end has an impact turning and this doesn't twist, it's going to have the amount of impact of the squishy. I got, it's got to be squishy. I don't really quite understand it either. But if you look at the size here, we're about half the size. So this one was 140 pounds. This one is 75 pounds. Hopefully that's showing up on the camera how much thickness difference there is between the two of them. So. And so, but the idea is if you don't want to use a torque wrench and you want to work fast, but you don't want to over torque something. And I think these could have an application for a guy like me who's just working on his own equipment, even without having a tire shop. It, it's possible. Um, it would need to be, the, you need something consistent every time. It, and it, it would have to fit, your needs would have to fit in the range of the available sizes. But I do think it's a neat tool with the, maybe some other applications. So I'm going to talk about one other thing that I didn't know about until I started tire shop. And then I figured out that there's some, uh, some cool stuff out here. Half size sockets. This was a whole new thing to me. I always thought, you know, three quarters, or you just grab your three quarters or 19 and call it a day. What happens is these uh, manufacturers put little um, silver tin cups over the lug nut for decoration, and your three quarters doesn't fit on there. It's so tight they get stuck. So you just grab your 19.5 for a three quarters, and then your socket will uh, or your um, will fall on off your uh, lug nut. Pretty cool. That way you don't get your uh, lug nuts hung up in your sockets and having to beat them on the ground or, or um, using a, a pokey thing to try and drive them out. So you use a half size bigger every time? Not every, like, not every time. You don't have to every it depends time. Depends on how it feels. Just, yeah, you just go up to it and like this is a 22, which is a very popular one. If it's too tight, you just, yeah, you would just flip it over and go 22.5. And you and you've never had that 22 and a half strip out of 22 or anything. It's no, because you, you, you just, it's a feel thing. If, if it's not needed, I don't use that in because it'd just be too wobbly. But it's sometimes you need that to, for the, it's just, it's not a true three quarters, which is why the 19.5. So I hope that what we've talked about today provided you guys some value, some information, or some entertainment. And I appreciate you for taking the time to walk through this with me. And as a thank you to him, if you're interested in equipment, check out Hammer High. Hammerhigh.com is where you need to go. We're based out of Columbus, Kansas. We're uh, equipment appraisers, auctioneers, and then certainly my company over here today is a part extension of my truck dealership. And we uh, do tires over here, ag tires, commercial tires, trailer tires. You need it. We'll get you taken care of right out of Columbus, Kansas. All right. So I appreciate you guys taking time to watch. I'll put links on the screen to a couple more of our videos and I'll see you next time.